Hi, and welcome to the podcast, Life in Balance. My name is Naomi. I work as an occupational therapist at Balance for Blind Adults. This podcast is about all the things that make life enjoyable, make life easier, and make life fun. In each episode, I'll talk about a different topic, whether it's how to cook, go to school, work, garden, make music, and much, much more. I'll talk about some tips and tricks, as well as how to adapt these different activities to accommodate vision loss. For our first episode, I had the pleasure of speaking with Jewel. Originally from Jamaica, Jewel moved to Toronto in 1974. She lost her vision in 1984. She is a mother to five daughters, and she enjoys cooking, shopping, painting, and doing makeup. In this episode, Jewel and I discuss how she likes to cook. Let's take a listen. My name is Jewel Johnson, um, visually impaired. Uh, I came to Canada in 1974. In September, it was the worst snowstorm I heard. <laughs> so it was kind of weird from a hot climate into a bunch of snow. <laughs> Maybe you can start by telling me a little bit about what you do to cook with a visual impairment. Depends on the meal that we're cooking. I don't really care particularly about the measurement of the spice. I say you go by your own judgment of the amount of spice to put inside your food. Like when you're seasoning up, say you want to season up chicken or pork chops, whatever. So, the, of course, it's more flavor when you add spice to it. Because I know people are kind of nervous about, I was at first, how much of, you know, like how much garlic, how much pepper. You know, I don't cook with salt. What are your favorite things to cook? I like barbecue chicken. I like to cook oxtail, but that's like a really big challenge. <laughs> I cook good spaghetti. Whatever. I like food, period. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids, I raised five daughters, so they enjoy the food. They're very healthy. That's great. And so normally when you cook, do you use the oven or the stove or microwave or all of those things? I don't use microwave. What I find easy to use is um, rotisserie. It's smaller, and it doesn't really overwhelm you like a big oven. And in the rotisserie, you can, like, it has the timer, it has the temperature. Like, there's some of them that you don't have to push the button. It just has the round dial on it. So you can set it for the time, how much, and it goes off. If the recipe requires an hour, you, or you set it for an hour to go off. If you need another half hour, go off. And it's easy to, because it's so small, it's more easier to check your food. You can cook a roast in there. You can cook chicken in there. You can bake anything or roast anything in there. How can you tell when the meat is fully cooked? You already know that meat, 45 minutes, under 45 minutes, it's not really that well cooked. So like an hour in the oven, that's like enough. You can just season up your meat and set the timer, stick it in the oven. An hour later, the food is ready and you're good to go. Okay, so just, you know, making sure you cook it for long enough, that makes sense. Yeah, it's all about the timing. Coat it over with the spice and cut up the vegetables if you want to put some garlic and pepper and tomato and onion. You can cut those up and you put it around the chicken where you want, stuff it around it on top of it, beside it. You do all that before you put it in the oven and you stick it in the, the rotisserie and you set the timer and it, that's it. And a lot of oven have timer too. Me personally, I like the rotisserie. If I'm baking more than one stuff, I'll use the oven. Or if I have some type of supervision sometimes, I use the oven. But they usually have timer. You just stick it in, wait that much time, and just that's it. It's not hard. 
Yeah, no, it sounds pretty easy. It reminds me of something like a slow cooker. Put it in, you set the timer, you walk away, and then and the food is it. done. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever cook anything on top of the stove? Yeah. And have you found that's pretty easy, or there's any tips that make it a little easier to manage? Always, it's better to have the pot covered and not on a high heat to cook things slowly. Always start off on the medium. Some people, they want to rush the food, but we can't do that because we end up doing that. We end up hurting ourselves, right? Right. So it's it's more safer to take your time. And like if you want to boil rice, I put half a cup of rice and then I put the water in and I stick my index finger and the water touches the top of my index finger away from the rice. And I cover it. You can put a little bit of margarine, put it on a low, like medium heat for about 10 minutes. And then after you turn it to low and that'll do it for the water would evaporate. When the water evaporates, the rice is cooked. I like that. Usually when I do it, I boil it and then put it on simmer. But that way, like you said, it, it's lower heat. It's a little safer that way, and it, it works just as well. Yeah, you can't rush food, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're, that's true. I'm a slow cooker. <laughs> but you know that's... Because I like it to taste good. That think overall, that's a good takeaway is don't rush good food. No, no. And even with the vegetable, it's better to get frozen vegetable. The frozen vegetable is just as healthy. Actually, it's better because it doesn't have the chemical like they do on the fresh vegetable because they got to keep it the color and keep it fresh out there for the customers. The frozen vegetable, it's it's already steamed and it's in the bag. Mm -hmm. So when you take it out now, you just have to maybe add a little bit of water. And if you want to put your pepper, a little bit of black pepper or whatever, and cover it, low heat, and let it slowly steam cook. That's awesome. So you've got the rice, you've got veggies, and you've got meat. You're, it's a full meal. Jewel brought up some great points during our chat. Although she doesn't use the microwave, this can be a helpful strategy for cooking if you haven't had a lot of experience with using an oven or stovetop, or if you're just cooking small items. But when it comes to cooking, when you're starting out, it can be helpful to follow a recipe to the letter. At the same time, it's okay not to perfectly measure things like spices, and more important, that you spice to your taste. One thing you could do could be to mix the spices and taste the spice blend before applying it to your meat or vegetables. On the other hand, it is very important to make sure that you fully cook meat. Following the recipe exactly can help with this. Another helpful tool is to use a meat thermometer. Each kind of meat has a specific temperature at which it is safe to eat. For example, the Government of Canada recommends that you cook chicken to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 64 degrees Celsius. It's also important to know the difference between cooking and baking. There's a saying that cooking is an art and baking is a science. It's not the end of the world if you add an extra potato into your rotisserie oven. On the other hand, you need to be very precise with your measurements as well as cooking time in baking because all of the ingredients influence whether or not whatever you're baking rises, cooks all the way through, or holds its shape. Hopefully we can talk more about baking in a future episode. Jewel also talks about timers, which are an excellent way to keep track of how long something has been cooking for. You can set a timer on your smartphone, and there are lots of other types of timers, whether they're on the appliance itself or something that you can purchase separately. Timers are also helpful for being organized in other ways, which we'll also talk more about on this podcast. For measuring water for recipes, I wanted to add that a measuring cup or talking scale can also be very useful. And finally, Jewel had a great point about frozen vegetables, which are a cheap and healthy way to get your daily recommended intake. As long as you wash fresh vegetables, though, you're welcome to enjoy them. And canned vegetables are also an option if you're worried about not being able to eat them in time after you do your shopping. That's it for this episode. Stay tuned for next time when we continue our conversation with Jewel and talk about strategies for putting on makeup. 
The content of this podcast is not a substitute for medical or professional advice. It is not occupational therapy, nor is it a substitute for occupational therapy services. If you're interested in learning more about how to apply some of the strategies discussed here, please ensure you consult with an OT or other professional beforehand. Thanks, and see you next time.